Hello guys and girls, welcome once again to the Land Rover Toolbox videos. We're not going to get too technical in this video, but I'd like to explain the difference between a preloaded bearing and a bearing which has end float. Okay, so first of all I have a TD5 axle, which is preloaded bearing and then it has a collar in between the bearings okay so that's the rear and the front bearings you have a washer here that goes before the hub nut it also retains grease to a certain extent and you also have one single lock nut which is staked okay now what this is is to stop the bearings from going too far and nipping up too tight so when you put a torque on it of 210 or whatever newton meters it is it will actually hold the bearings just right at the correct adjustment this is sort of idiot proof the collar itself that goes between the bearings is not collapsible which means this bearing preload is not adjustable the other type of setup that we have on older land rovers and fenders is having to set end float okay so what we have on the second type is something that has no collar and no restriction between the bearings okay so they can be moved closer or further apart this has the advantage of being able to adjust the wheel bearing or perhaps sometimes a disadvantage okay remember that if you have one of these washers make sure that goes back with these bearings and of course you have your first adjuster nut out of two of the nuts, the adjuster nut needs to run freely on the stub shaft to make sure that you can get fine adjustment on it without tricking yourself. Right, with the nut, okay, you can wind it in to make the bearing tighter, sit tighter, or wind it out slightly to let it off. Okay, so what I'm going to do is drop a bit of hype oil onto the bearings so that we don't have a problem with them. I'm not going to run this, this is only a demonstration, okay, there's no seal in here, but what I'd like to show you is an idea about what the end float is all about. Okay, so the first nut is on, and this is the adjustment nut, I'll just quickly grab a tool, and I'll show you that this now is excessive end float, there's too much movement, and there's too much gap between the bearings and the race, so if you tighten it up, I'll just nip it a bit too hard and the bearing becomes stiffer to turn okay because it's too tight loosen it off okay just slightly and it becomes easier if you were professional you'd actually be able to feel this and you'll know that there won't be any movement or any play so the bearing will run smoothly whereas on the opposite if it's too loose it will move and it will be even more excessive with the wheel on but it will spin quite freely. There are quite a few ways of actually setting the end flow on these bearings and we're not going to go into these in this tutorial. The other great difference with a bearing that needs to have the end flow set is we'll have a lock tab and a lock washer. Now once this washer's on I've got to find where the tab slots into which is in this case at the bottom. You need the locking washer even when the lock nut is tightened up this will stop the lateral force of the bearing winding the two nuts off together 